Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a kind of update video uh, similar to a video that I did quite a while back that has gotten some different mixed opinions uh, from the last time I did it. Now, since that last video, I have acquired another Holtzbrook and another GBA. So I wanted to make this comparison a little bit more fair rather than just talk about, you know, a GBA that I've had for six years and Holtzbrook that I just bought. I wanted to talk about, you know, two tools that I had just bought and, you know, kind of compare them, contrast them. So today we're going to be taking a look, another look, at Holtzbrook versus Gransforsbrook and talking about the quality of the axes and the fit, the finish, and just everything about these guys. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So these are the four axes that I have, or four, I should say two axes, two hatchets that I have for display. And like I said, these two are GBAs, these two are Holtzbrooks, and you can probably see they have a good family resemblance, and that's actually probably for the better because it's good to see that at least the quality control is there. So what do I think about uh, Holtzbrook versus GBA? Well, largely my opinion has unfortunately stayed the same. Now, I was trying to get into, you know, Holtzbrook a little bit more to see, you know, is the quality there and, you know, what is the quality like. But so far, it continues to not necessarily be horrible. And I want to say this out front, that I don't necessarily think that the Holtzbrook hatchets or axes are bad tools. I just don't think that they quite live up to the marketing behind them. And what I mean by this is when you go on their website, these two particular axes are marketed as premium axes. So Holtzbrook kind of makes a more generic line of axes and then they make their hand forged line of axes that are supposed to be more similar to things like GBAs. And uh, these are their premium line of axes. And when I see their premium line of axes, it just kind of disappoints me because as I said in my first video, I'm not so much saying that these tools don't work, but for the price you're paying for these tools, you're paying a lot, and they're still, in my opinion, especially holding them up to the standard of GBA, they're still missing the mark, and it's kind of the devil is in the details. So when I got this uh, Anabi, and I just got it in yesterday, um, when I got it, pulling it right out of the box, the handle I had to redo because the handle uh, grains were so coarse and rough that they were genuinely like feeling sandpaper. So I had to knock down the handle and sand it down and I had to of course get rid of the little stupid warning sign that they have on all their handles which is dumb. But I got rid of that and I had to sand down the entire handle and then I retreated it with um, and then I retreated the handle. But aside from that uh, the other thing that I noticed was that the fitment, once again, is not stellar on these axes. Now, I don't think that the fitment is so bad that there will develop any head wobble, and so, therefore, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but I've noticed, like, on this axe here, when it, it's hard to see in this particular shot, but the actual head, um, or where I should say, the handle comes out of the eye of the axe, is completely uneven and it's actually like pretty bad off and it definitely it just doesn't look that great now the fitment i will say on this axe to the eye is better than on my all mic which was initial my, one of my initial complaints of this hatchet but it still just leaves a lot to be desired and i just want to make it clear that like i said the reason why i'm being so hard on holtzbrook and the reason why I'm making such a fuss while some people might, you know, say, you know, oh, just, you know, stop complaining about it. These are clearly, you know, use user tools. You know, you're supposed to go out in the woods and use these tools, not, you know, look at them with a, you know, magnifying glass. I would largely second that opinion, but 
when it comes down to these tools, these are tools that are going to be heirlooms, or at least that's the assumption of why we buy these tools. You know, these are tools that are supposed to last us a lifetime. These are the tools that are supposed to, you know, be passed down to grandchildren or whatever you have in mind, you know. So when you buy these tools, it, you're willing to spend that premium money on these tools with the idea that these are going to be in your collection forever. And with that in mind, you want to get tools that look good, feel good, and really attend and were built with attention to detail. In addition to that, I will also note with the uh, the with the Holtzbruch I got, just like this Holtzbruch, I mean, you can see, you know, they have nearly identical blade stylings. I'm still not a fan of the blade style, and in my opinion, I don't like the way this is done. I find the way that they did this blade is not only unnatural, and the way they do their blades is not only unnatural, but it's also cheap, in my opinion, because what I mean by that is that it's slightly more efficient when they are hand foraging these axes to draw out the middle of the axe and then you know leave it at that instead of drawing out the whole blade so when they do these uh when they forge these heads you know they draw out uh the steel and they draw out the middle but instead of drawing out the whole blade they draw out just the middle and then when they go to grind it they just so they grind it kind of like this and so what that leaves you with is a blade that when you're actually contacting wood with you know the the blade is contacting wood at the very belly of the blade here but it's not really contacting as much on your edges so as your blade dulls this will become more noticeable uh, I will say Holtzbruch does do a good job at sharpening their axes so when you get these things out of box they are razor sharp but once again, uh, this weird blade profile will become more noticeable when in time, you know, when the blade slightly dulls down. But like I said, there's just not a lot of contact when the blade first strikes the piece of wood. And that's what I dislike most about the blade shape as opposed to the GBAs, which you can really immediately tell. And it's a little bit easier because these two are axes. But you can immediately tell that with the GBA, when they're hand forging these axes, they draw the entire um, steel out so that it's a little bit more flat. Now, obviously, with an axe, there is going to be some belly, there's going to be some taper, there's going to be some, you know, um, rounding to the blade. But you can see that by and large with the GBA because they draw out the entire blade or the, uh, the blade of the axe, you get a lot more contact when you touch wood. So when you're actually contacting a piece of wood, you know, it's contacting a lot more of that edge. It's not just that very belly. You're really getting a far better contact. And same goes for the hatchet here. The hatchet might even be a better example because it's ground and uh, drawn just a little bit differently. But you can see that by and large, this uh, GBA has much a flatter edge. Whereas on this uh, all mic here, you can see that it's definitely more um, swept. And that's just, it's a little thing, but like I said, you notice these things when you use your tools a lot. And uh, it's definitely not the end of the world, but it's it's not the best. So in my opinion, I like I said, the same thing that I said in the first video, I'll say it again. If you can find GBAs, you know, they are out there. They're not the easiest to find, but if you're looking for a tool, I would go for GBAs. They're definitely higher quality. They're cut above Holtzbruch. And as a consequence of that, they still will be, you know, a good $40 more, but really that's not that much more to pay for the quality you're getting. Lastly, I should also note that uh, this was the new acquisition for the GBA. So I got this GBA and out of box, what did I have to do with this tool? Absolutely nothing. When I got it out of box, it was completely ready to go. The handle was just fine. It didn't feel abrasive like sandpaper. Everything was absolutely golden, just like with my original GBA. So anyways, guys, that is my opinion on Holtzbruch versus GBA. GBA is still better. I would always choose a GBA, but if you are looking for a tool, Holtzbruch do not produce bad tools, they're just not the best. 
Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.